The life of Minnie Dean unfolded in the midst of personal tragedies and societal complexities that culminated in infamy. Her story, marked by the enigmatic circumstances of her arrival on foreign shores, a dubious marriage and a haunting series of events leading to her execution, sheds light on the complexities of 19th century society. Minnie Dean's journey began in the heart of Greenock, around 30 miles northwest of Glasgow, Scotland, where she was born as Williamina McCulloch to railway engine driver John McCulloch and his wife Elizabeth Swan. The McCulloch family would later embark on a significant journey to New Zealand in search of new opportunities and a better life. Minnie's early life in Scotland was marred by the loss of her mother to cancer in 1857. Little is known about the years following her mother's death until her migration to New Zealand in the early 1860s. This move marked the first chapter of Minnie Dean's life in a land that would soon bear witness to her tragic destiny. Sources suggest that Minnie arrived in New Zealand with two young daughters, although the details surrounding her life in the interim period remain elusive. In June of 1872, Minnie married Charles Dean, an innkeeper from Tasmania, Australia, who was two decades her senior, and the couple settled in Invercargill, a town in New Zealand's South Island. As the decade came to a close, Charles had turned his efforts to farming, which for a time was successful. However, by 1884, the value of the farm dwindled significantly, leaving the Deans with little to no money to their names. Unfortunately, the Deans faced the heart-wrenching challenge of infertility, unable to conceive children of their own. This circumstance would eventually shape the trajectory of their lives. Determined to build a family despite their own fertility struggles, Minnie and Charles Dean established an adoption agency in 1889. The agency aimed to facilitate adoptions for children born to unmarried mothers, providing a seemingly altruistic service to a society that often stigmatised such circumstances. In 1880, their two daughters had left home, leaving Minnie and Charles as empty nesters. The couple, driven by a desire for family life, decided to adopt five-year-old Margaret Cameron and relocated to Winton, purchasing an abandoned two-storey house named The Larches. Tragedy struck, however, when the house unexpectedly burned down, leading to the construction of a smaller cottage by Charles, along with the initiation of pig farming on the property. Concurrently, Minnie Dean entered the controversial practice of baby farming, taking in unwanted infants for payment, leaving advertisements in local newspapers. This practice, common in 19th century New Zealand, aimed to address the social stigma associated with having children out of wedlock. Many Dean's activities as a baby farmer attracted attention when, in 1889, a six-month-old baby died under her care. Two years later, another six-week-old infant suffered a similar fate. Inquests were held into both unexplained deaths, revealing that despite the children being well cared for, the living conditions at the Larches were deemed extremely inadequate. The judge advised Minnie to reduce the number of foster children, issuing a warning. However, suspicions had already arisen. Authorities discovered Dean's attempts to take out life insurance policies on some infants, prompting close surveillance by the local police. The turning point came in May of 1895, when Minnie Dean was caught with a baby and a suspiciously light hat box on a train. She was seen leaving the train without the child, but still had the hat box in her possession. The subsequent investigation revealed a gruesome discovery in Dean's garden. The bodies of two recently buried baby girls, Dorothy Carter and Eva Hornsby, and the skeleton of a four-year-old boy. 
The turning point in Minnie Dean's life occurred on the 12th of August, 1895, when she was arrested and charged with the murder of a young boy named Hunter Shaw. The prosecution alleged that Dean intentionally administered a lethal dose of laudanum, a tincture of opium, to the child. This jaw-dropping revelation sent shockwaves through the community, challenging the perception of Minnie Dean as a caregiver. Charles Dean was also arrested, however all charges against him were subsequently dropped. Charged with infanticide, Minnie Dean faced a Supreme Court trial for the murder of Dorothy Edith Carter. The defence, led by renowned lawyer Alfred Hanlon, attempted to argue that Carter's death was accidental, despite the cause being an overdose of laudanum, a common opiate used to calm infants during that period. While Minnie Dean did not testify during the trial, she provided a written account of her activities. She asserted that, apart from Margaret Cameron and Esther Wallace, a 10-year-old girl adopted by the Deans in 1890, a total of 26 children, including Eva Hornsby and Dorothy Carter, had been under her care from 1889 to 1895. Of this number, six are confirmed to have passed away. One was reclaimed by their family, and at the time of her arrest, five healthy children resided at the Larches. The fate of the others remain unknown. Many Dean's case had divided public opinion. Some sympathised with her plight, acknowledging the societal and economic pressures that led her to run the adoption agency. Others saw her as a cold-blooded killer, responsible for the deaths of allegedly many innocent children. The controversy surrounding her case echoed the broader debates about justice, gender roles and the challenges faced by women in the late 19th century. Despite Alfred Hanlon's efforts in court, public sentiment turned against Minnie Dean during the trial. Dolls in small hat boxes were reportedly sold as souvenirs, depicting the chilling nature of her crimes. Following a four-day trial, Dean was found guilty of murdering Carter and sentenced to death by hanging. On August the 12th, 1895, exactly one year to the day of Hunter Shaw's death, Minnie Dean walked to the gallows at Invercargill Jail, maintaining her innocence to the end. The public spectacle surrounding her execution reflected the disdain she had earned, as described by reports of her scrutinising glance at the gallows, the hangman and her contemptuous loathing. Her final words, a proclamation of innocence, echoed through the air as she descended into the abyss. A detailed account of her final hours was published in newspapers. It was reported that she slept from 11.30 the previous night until 3 o'clock that morning. She refused breakfast, merely taking a sip from a glass of spirits provided by the attending surgeon just before departing her condemned cell. Her parting words to the surgeon, as she marched from the cell with bound arms, emphasised her plea not to endure prolonged agony. Upon ascending the scaffold, she maintained a composed demeanour, standing hatless and upright on the trap door, facing the marked grave of Walsh, the Waikawa murderer. The hangman adjusted the rope, placing the white cap on her head. During the pinioning of her feet, the remarkable willpower of the condemned woman showed signs of yielding, causing her to sway while holding tightly to the warder's hands. In response to the sheriff's inquiry about any final words before departing this world, she replied, quote, No, except that I am innocent. Following the conclusive pinioning, she uttered, quote, Oh God, let me not suffer. The hangman then pulled the lever and death was instantaneous. To Reverend Mr Lindsay, who had been by her side since the sentence was pronounced, Dean conveyed that, based on the evidence, the sentence seemed justified. However, she vehemently asserted her innocence regarding any intention or premeditation of murder. Minnie Dean is the only woman to have ever been executed in New Zealand. 
Minnie Dean's execution left an indelible mark on the country's history, and her legacy extended beyond the confines of a gruesome tale. Local legend transformed her into a bogeyman, a figure used to scare misbehaving children. The haunting image of Minnie Dean dressed in black with a hat pin became a cautionary tale in Southland. Beyond the folklore, the impact of Minnie's case resonated in legislative changes. In response to her trial, the Infant Life Protection Act 1893 and the Infant Protection Act 1896 were enacted to enhance child welfare in New Zealand. Minnie Dean's life and the circumstances leading to her execution continue to be the subjects of historical inquiry and debate. Some argue that her execution was a harsh and unjust punishment, considering the societal and economic challenges she navigated while attempting to provide a service for vulnerable children. Others maintain that her actions were nothing but criminal and justice was appropriately served. Her legacy prompts reflections on the complexities surrounding crime and punishment in the pursuit of justice. Her story serves as a poignant reminder of the pressures and expectations placed on women in the late 19th century, as well as the challenges faced by those who sought to challenge traditional norms. In 2009, a mysterious headstone marked Minnie Dean's grave, reminding the community of her place in Winton's history. The inscription reflects the paradoxical nature of her legacy, acknowledging her role in history while emphasising the enduring mystery surrounding her final resting place. Minnie Dean's legacy is multifaceted, a cautionary tale, a catalyst for legislative change and a chilling reminder of a woman who became a merciless killer. In Southland, there exists a wildflower referred to as a Minnie Dean, and local belief suggests that if it happens to grow in a household garden, it is advised to uproot and incinerate the plant. As the mysterious headstone suggests, Minnie Dean's place in history is both acknowledged and shrouded in mystery, leaving an indelible mark on Winton's landscape and the broader narrative of New Zealand's past.